Hey guys, it's Mark from Ace Tutors, and in this video, I'm going to teach you about the power rule for integrals. Just like there is a rule for taking the derivative of functions with exponents, there is also one for taking the integral or antiderivative of those same functions. So let's jump right in. To understand where the power rule for integrals comes from, let's first recap the power rule for derivatives. As a reminder, you use the power rule whenever you have a function like this, x raised to some power n. To then take the derivative of this, we first bring the exponent down and multiply the function by it. Then, we subtract 1 from the exponent to get that the final answer is n times x raised to n minus 1. So normally, we follow these steps going downwards when taking the derivative. But what about the process for integrals? Since integrals are the opposite of derivatives, we need to work backwards to undo everything that we did in the derivative power rule. So let's say we have the same function we had before of x raised to some exponent n. Since the last step of the derivative was to subtract 1 from the exponent, we need to first add 1 back to the exponent. Then, since the previous step was to multiply by the exponent, we need to now divide by that exponent. So in the end, we would find that the integral of x raised to the nth power is x raised to the n plus 1 power divided by n plus 1. But since this is an indefinite integral, we need to add plus some unknown constant c to account for the possibility of there being a constant in the original function. Now, once again, we can verify that we are right by taking the derivative of this result. Taking the derivative of our answer, we would multiply by n plus 1, which cancels with the bottom, and subtract 1 from the exponent to get the original function of x raised to the nth power. To solidify our understanding of this rule, let's do a quick example. Say we wanted to find the integral of y, where y is equal to 6x squared. Following the power rule, we would first add 1 to the exponent to get 3, and then divide by this new exponent to get 6x cubed divided by 3. But as always, don't forget to tack on your plus c. Finally, we can simplify the 6 and 3 from this result to get our final antiderivative of 2x cubed plus c. And remember, we can always take the derivative of this result to see if we're right. Taking the derivative of 2x cubed plus a constant would give us 6x squared, which is exactly where we started. If you found this video helpful, don't be afraid to tap that little like button below the video. I promise you, it won't bite. And of course, subscribe to our channel to see more of our content. Thanks again for watching, and remember, you have big dreams. Don't let a class get in the way.